Oh my God. So this year I had a unique opportunity to hunt a seven and a half year old giant 10 point in Illinois on a farm I'd never set foot on in my life. I got an invite from a landowner. He wanted a free land consultation in return. I got the opportunity then to hunt this 180 inch legendary whitetail that they had nicknamed Scissors. So first off, you know, I'm looking at this like, okay, I'm going into a property I've never hunted before in my life and chasing an animal that is the 5% type animal that grows and gets to this stature and lives this long. And, you know, first off, I wanted to know his age. Nearest they could figure, he had to be around seven years old, I believe. So at that point, it was just a matter of then looking at the aerial, obviously, studying the snot out of it, looking for any kind of thing that I felt like this deer could be. You know, where they had gotten pictures, encounters, where people had seen him over the years. Was there any kind of pattern that this deer had? And then if I could put all those kind of things together and start making a game plan to try to start hunting this deer, that's what I was gonna do. It was kind of like being an investigator. Ask the questions and then do your own homework and see if you can make the clues fit. So this property consists of big ag cornfield on the neighbors to the front. Ryan's property itself had very little crops on it. It's basically an old strip country area of Illinois where a lot of stuff had grown back up into locust thickets, a lot of grassy, weedy areas. So it had a nice creek bottom with a big swampy, grassy area. Then it went to a hillside of nice hardwood timber. So this thing was very diverse. It had a lot of cover. This deer could be anywhere. And it basically was gonna be a point of doing some observation, doing some hunting, and starting in some spots, and seeing what we could see, see what the deer were doing, before I really started making some aggressive moves or figuring out, because I didn't want to tip this guy off that I was actually there to hunt him. So my first spot that I was gonna start was an area where a neighbor had got a picture of scissors in the daylight on his food plot off of Ryan's property, but this was an area that the deer, I'm guessing, in my own mind, figured that he probably crossed Ryan's property at some point, going from the corn to the swamp and bedding areas and so forth. So I was gonna start on a little point of willows just to see if I couldn't see this deer from a distance or see what the deer in general were doing. So I was gonna start the chess match by just being observant and non-intrusive as possible. So we'd started out in this observatory spot one evening and then the next morning, and this would have been November 3rd. We saw some deer, but we did not see scissors and actually didn't see the kind of deer movement in that area that I thought I should see based upon what people were telling me. So it kind of made me wonder just a little bit. But one thing I did notice in that area, there was a lot of big box blinds. You know, the neighbors had big box blinds, Ryan had some blinds in that general area. And so there was some pressure right there. And a big deer like him this time of year could be anywhere. He could be off with a doe somewhere else. He could come back to this farm two days later. Taking all that into consideration, it was bouncing around. You know, I didn't see that deer the, the first evening. I didn't see him the next morning. So I started getting aggressive. I started moving. I went deeper into the swamp, crossed the creek, got up on a hillside. All right, we got a tree picked out here not actually going up as high as we originally thought we were going to. There's so many deer trails converging at the bases of these little bridges that we just feel like we're just gonna blow all the deer out. So we're just gonna sit down here. It's rut time, it's November 3rd. Deer should be cruising. There's a lot of bedding below us, there's bedding above us. And in between it, maybe we'll catch one of these big bucks cruising in here. There's a couple of big trail intersections and they're tight right to this tree but that'll give us a chance maybe to get our wind over top of them while we're right tight to the trail. Got in the stand that evening, encountered this deer we called mule at a distance and a couple other bucks. Really good movement and kind of gave me some hope that like, okay, I could be in the right spot. There's a lot of deer on their feet, but I wasn't seeing like the super, super mature deer. The one deer called mule, he definitely was a mature deer, but he didn't quite act as aggressive as like I felt he should for the time of year. So I was like, you know, we'll give this spot one more chance in the morning and then we'll make a decision. Well, that was somewhat cool. Where did that buck come down? And I saw another buck behind him, but he never come all the way down. I don't know why. Gives us a little fire to want to keep on. We've seen, I think, four or five bucks now. Kind of know what we need to do. 
I told my camera guy, let's just get boots on the ground here and we're gonna carry everything with us and we're gonna start looking for what I wanna find that makes me feel confident that I can be closer to where Scissors is. So I started looking at my aerial and I decided I'm gonna start following this creek bottom through this swamp and I'm gonna get into some of these spoil banks and start looking around. Started finding some good sign and I'm standing there looking at this and then I, I looked up to my left and I could see a bench on these spoil banks and I could see some cedars right there. I haven't gone, I haven't stepped up on this bench 10 yards and I already see what I want to see. I can see four scrapes right here. And this is what you're looking for with the big buck. Big, big mature deer. His bedroom is always just thrashed because they spend so much time in there. It's what they do, they don't like to move around a lot. All right, I think we found what we're looking for. Found a nice little tree right here. These stands are small enough we can hunt a tree like that. We're not gonna be real high off the ground, but we're gonna be right in the roundhouse of how these deer travel on this bench. So we're gonna see what we can make happen. We're gonna get these stands hung, sit it the rest of the day. It was the perfect situation because I could, through a long walk, we could access through the bottom, along the creek, through the swamp in the morning, and come up the backside of this steep hill and climb right into the top of the bench. And I wanted my stand right on the edge of that bench where I could blow my scent over the hill to where it gave me a chance whether I could do some calling or whatever I needed to do if I saw that deer, he could not get downwind of me very easy. So the next morning we get up, we take this long walk, you know, around through the swamp and it's kind of noisy, a little more noisier than I want it to be, but I felt like the deer would not be in there yet. Like, cause it's so far back in and it's, it's more bedding. The deer shouldn't be in the bedding area, you know, an hour before daylight. So whenever we see deer here, they're going to be tight. So we have to be as scentless as possible. I used the phase system and it wasn't long and I could hear a doe just kind of like snorting a little bit, like blowing but I knew she wasn't blowing at us because our wind was perfect. And she was probably 65, 70 yards in front of us up on this other thick spot of this locust thicket above the bench. But I couldn't see any other deer. I could just see her running through and I could tell by the way she was moving that she was being bumped by a buck. I said, if this is scissors, I'm right here in his core. I know I can make him mad. So I tried grunting a little bit with the extinguisher and I didn't get a response right away, but I could still hear deer up. And I actually thought I could hear like antlers bang together a little bit, like he'd run another buck off. I'm gonna grab the black rack, cause this is kind of like a last ditch effort here. And I'm gonna see if I can't really tick him off.
we just killed a giant Javen. He's dead right there. Oh my God. He's down. He went 20 yards. Probably the biggest deer I've ever shot in my life, frame wise. Jesus, thank you so much. Oh my gosh. I don't believe it, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm in shock. I'm in shock right now. He came right to the black rack. And here he come. Like a king. That is scissors. The infamous deer that we were invited to hunt because the landowner was like, if you can kill this deer, you're gonna teach me something about my farm. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> yes! Yes! Oh my gosh, dude. Like, I mean, this is... <laughs> this is amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Go. Oh, monster, man. What a deer. Dude. <laughs> Scissors. Look at this dude. Oh my gosh. Look at those beams. Hey, those are big. Wow. What a deer. Unreal. He's such a king, dude. When he comes walking in there. Everything about this deer is big. His body is giant. I mean, this was definitely an old monarch of the forest. Just to hold that big rack, nice, big, wide, tall, towering G2s. The deer was incredible. Just what an animal and uh, just so thankful to be able to harvest it. Some of the things that I felt like were the major points to make me successful in this quest on a farm that I'd never been on in my life. One, studying the aerial photographs, knowing topographical lines, knowing where benches, splits, funnels, creek systems, how deer use land. Two, Giant bucks leave giant sign. Older mature deer leave big sign. They wanna tell everybody, this is where I'm at, stay the heck out of here, and if you come in here, I'm gonna kick your butt. Another thing too to keep in mind, I think a lot of people, they try calling and it doesn't work for them. I don't start calling to a deer until I know he's the deer I wanna shoot, or he's around, or at a distance. With this situation with scissors, I couldn't see him, didn't even know it was him, but I knew there was a buck there. And so I wanted to start out slow because he was only 60, 70 yards away, period, at that. And so I started off slow, grunted a few times first, and then I started tickling those antlers like they started feeling each other. Then I got a little more aggressive. It's about seeing that deer or knowing that he's there and envisioning what he's doing. And without a doubt, the black rack, you know, the extinguisher, they killed this deer. I mean, it was what made him take the last steps of his life, without a doubt.